Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Technically Something, the show where we talk about technology, creativity, tutorials, and gaming. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Allen, and today we are going to be talking about everybody's favorite photo manipulation software, Photoshop. Now, as many of you know by now, if you've watched my previous videos, that was some introductory stuff. And the more advanced you get, the more you begin to understand how certain images may have been made or how Photoshop was used to put them together. And this can all range from things as simple as touch up, um, smoothing out certain features, liquefying somebody to look <laughs> anatomically incorrect, or it can be things much more abstract, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video, is looking at something and trying to reverse engineer it so that you can do the same thing as well. Um, this is where you begin to synthesize what information you know about Photoshop and start to venture out on your own and start doing your own things. Let's not waste any time and get straight to it. I will see you in just a sec. All right, everybody. So, um, as you can clearly see, I'm looking through Google and all I searched was cool Photoshopped pictures. And you can see a variety of things going on here um, and all sorts of really cool stuff. And in your position, I guess all I would ask you to do is Find an image that appeals to you. Find something that you think is interesting. That is special. A lot of these, you know, we've already done animal hybrids or new species, uh, but I would challenge you to try something that's outside of your comfort zone, something that you, um, I guess, would have to exercise your Photoshop muscles on a bit. So something that I thought was kind of cool is this example here of this little frog that's also an orange peel. I think that's the right amount of unsettling and weird, and it just catches my eye. So I'm gonna try to replicate this, and I'm gonna show you how I would deconstruct this or reverse engineer it so that I can create it myself. Now, as we start off, I know that I'm gonna need to find a picture of a frog, so let's do that search. I think this might be the one. I'm just gonna make a new file because that's even a bigger image, so it's better. Okay, that's a pretty good frog image. Now we need to find what I think might be a little bit more challenging is an orange peel that looks like that. So, orange peel. Um, twirl, I guess? might actually be able to use this one, and for the most part it's already cut out. And you may be asking yourself, why am I not just copying and pasting this? Even if it is a transparent background, um, if I were to copy and paste this, when I do, it's going to bring the black as the background, because Photoshop doesn't understand what the transparency is when you're just copying it to your clipboard, so it fills it in with black, it fills it in with what it thinks is nothing. So I'm going to hit Control-Z. Um, if you want to place this as a PNG, you have to save it as a PNG. So I'm going to go to my desktop, orange peel detail, sure, we'll just keep that name, save it, go back to Photoshop, go to file, and let's place embedded, which pretty much means that when I place it, it's going to be part of the image. It's not linking the image. Okay, I think we'll be able to use this. It's generally the same shape as our frog. Yeah, I think we'll be able to make some magic with this. So the next thing I'm going to do is use some adjustment layers to alter the hue and saturation. I want this to be pretty close to the same color as the frog. I'm going to have to link this or anchor it first so that the colors aren't changing on me. And I'd say that's pretty close. I think it's close enough, close enough for me. The trickier part, I'm gonna hide both of these. 
And now I gotta separate my frog. We could go two different directions with this. We could either just remove a piece here, I'll draw it out. We'd have to separate this area here. That's pretty much gonna be the area that we can play with. Um, but we'll have to also create the leaf texture behind it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna turn my feather down to zero and do here is select that area and before we do anything I'm gonna duplicate the layer hide it and now with this I think the best move I can do for now is clone stamp some of this leaf in there so I'm gonna hold alt and sample the spot I'm gonna sample that in Hold Alt and sample down here, and sample upward. Now it's not perfect, but we're also just getting started. So, next tricky part is going to be getting this into the correct position. And we could end up fighting with this quite a bit. Um, so one of the things I would do in this situation is transform it so that we can fix it to the body's shape. So I have it right about where I want it. Might have to do a little bit of combining here, but for the most part, I think we're good. Obviously the orange peel is stretching way too far off the side of the body here. So I can turn my feather up a little bit, but just a little, maybe to 10 pixels and I'm gonna select this side of the orange peel uh, I forgot <laughs> before I can do anything else to this you'll notice that in the bottom right hand corner of the thumbnail it has this icon this means that it is a smart object and Photoshop will not let us make any destructive changes to it which can be a good thing so I'm gonna duplicate this I'm gonna re-anchor the hue and saturation, make sure that's turned on. And then I'm gonna right click and rasterize this layer. This one I'll just hide and it'll be my backup. In fact, I'll call it that. So with it rasterized, I can transform this single portion over here and kind of squeeze it in a bit. And if that's still not working, the next best thing we could do is to kind of place this in a way where we can hide it behind. So I'm actually gonna take this whole chunk and just cut it out and paste it on top. We'll say um, orange two. Put this by itself underneath the other orange. But notice that I also have to take that hue and saturation with it. So don't forget to reattach that there. Now it's just a layers game. I'm gonna take this orange using the lasso tool or even the pen tool, you could go through and I'm gonna select out very carefully the portions that I don't need and I'm gonna remove that. The trickier part here is gonna be blending it in with the body. So I'm gonna drop the opacity and now what I'm gonna do is lasso right around where the arm goes up here. Make sure it goes right along where we need it. And I can remove that portion. So as for the rest of it, the remaining parts of the orange, I can bring this back up to full. And now I'm gonna use a layer mask. And some of you might be going, hey, wait, 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 wait. You told us to be non-destructive, and you just hit delete a whole bunch of times! Well, to you I say, I have a backup. I have a backup of the original just in case I make any major mistakes. Now, is it the right thing to do? Mm, yes and no. Um, really, this is when you start to understand when you can be destructive and non-destructive. The whole point of doing all of that is to save yourself time and to work effectively. It's not necessarily that your file is going to fall apart, but it's just to save you time. 
So just use it accordingly. Unless, of course, I, I ask you in class to make it non-destructive, then make it non-destructive. All right, so now I've made a mask and you guessed it, I'm gonna get a soft round brush and I'm gonna paint black in to hide in the pieces, to hide those pieces that I don't need. And just like the hybrids, I can kind of blend out the parts of the body so that they come together much better. Not bad at all. Now, I need to take my other orange peel, scoot this in closer. But see how I was strategic? I put the layer underneath. So now I can scoot this closer and mask out whatever I don't need here. So I'm gonna transform it, get it to right where I want it, hit okay. And on our frog and on the orange too, I'm gonna create masks. So this way, same deal. I will hide out the parts that I don't need. And I don't think I need the back portion. I'm gonna blend that in with the body a little bit. Now, with the portion underneath, so if I hide all of my orange stuff, you'll see that we have this small portion here of the body showing through underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and patch that up. I'm gonna make sure this layer is selected, go in, lasso a little bit more of this chunk here, and then I'm gonna use the stamp one more time. It is a destructive edit, but sometimes you do what you gotta do. Sample one more time. Okay. Let's see how that looks with everything turned on. All right, we're getting there. I do have to get a little bit of this stem um, just because I'm a perfectionist. Let's grab that. shrink it down but I'll put one there select it one more time and add some more right there that should be okay let's bring it back take a look hey it's shaping up so at this point I'm gonna go and just touch up a few more points to smooth out that leaf and I think on the original orange we have a few little pixels hiding here that I want to erase, get taken out of there. Okay, um, and also on the bottom of this orange peel, I don't like that white portion that's just kind of showing. It, it looks like it wasn't cut out very well. So I'm gonna go through and just carefully mask that out. Plus I think having, oops, gotta be careful. Once I have that, I see that I need to work on some of the shading underneath there. There's a little portion from my last selection, so let's take that, go back to our frog layer, and I'm just going to actually use the brush and paint this part in. It's a nice quick fix. Okay, now portion here looks a little funky and I think that's because of our orange so I will make sure to clean that up whoa <laughs> make sure you click the mask there now using black hide that back out and really when you get to this point it's just about touch up I think that's pretty decent. And there we have it. Let's compare it to the image that we had at the beginning. So, they have their frog. We have ours. Between you and me, I think mine's better. All right, no, that's not fair. The, the example is uh, way better than mine. But, guaranteed, they probably spent a lot more time than 15 minutes on it. So, I guess we'll just have to call this one a draw. So there you have it. That's how we reverse engineer something. Um, 
Do you think that you could reverse engineer something with the techniques that we've gone over in these videos? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you had ideas for things that you want to reverse engineer, go ahead and write that as well. Maybe it's something that I can actually make a tutorial video about for you. If this is your first time visiting the channel, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe so that you can see new videos as they come out. In the meantime, I'm Kevin Allen, and this was technically something. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.